Hi, I'm Dr. Hartwell, and today we'll be discussing treatment options for aortic stenosis. Today, the three treatment options for aortic stenosis are surgical aortic valve replacement, SAVR, minimally invasive aortic valve replacement, mini-AVR, and transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR. SAVR, or surgical aortic valve replacement, involves a sternotomy and directly replacing your aortic valve. This is the tried and true method of heart surgery, and it's the most researched and studied since it has been around the longest. We also have a lot of data and know the implanted valve will last on average 10 to 15 years if it's a tissue valve, and even longer if it's a mechanical valve. Mini AVR, or minimally invasive aortic valve replacement, is a very similar procedure to SAVR, but the difference is a much smaller incision. Instead of cutting your chest open, a smaller incision is made between your ribs or the top of your chest. Patients recover much faster than SAVR. It's an excellent option, but not all surgeons perform minimally invasive valve surgery, so it's important you find one that does. And lastly, there's TAVR, or transcatheter aortic valve replacement. It involves a small incision in your groin. This is the least invasive and newest approach. Patients recover the fastest with this approach. Because it's a new technology, we don't know how long the valve will last. TAVR also has a slightly higher incidence of stroke and paravalvular leak compared to SAVR. Let's figure out which approach is best for you. Your physician will use your past medical history and evaluation to calculate your risk of something bad happening. This is called the STS risk score. High risk patients usually have an STS score greater than 8%. Patients who are intermediate risk usually have an STS score between 4 and 8%. And low risk patients usually have an STS score less than 4%. Is this getting confusing yet? Freeze for a second. Let's break this down so it's easier to understand. Let's first talk about patients who are high risk with an STS score greater than 8%. These patients are either too sick for surgery or at high risk for complications and death after SAVR. For this group of patients, it's increasingly clear that TAVR or TAVR is potentially the best option. Patients who are intermediate risk have an STS score of 4 to 8%. There's an important study that compared TAVR versus SAVR in intermediate risk patients. For the most part, the results and outcomes were similar, but TAVR delivered through the groin appeared slightly better than SAVR. So in summary, for intermediate risk patients, either TAVR or SAVR are good options, although most folks are leaning toward TAVR. Low risk patients have an STS score of less than 4%. We really don't know whether SAVR or TAVR is better for this patient group. For example, we know these patients do great with SAVR, especially if they have minimally invasive surgery. On the other hand, they'll also do great with TAVR, but since it's a newer technology, there's a lot of unknowns. Currently, there's a national study comparing SAVR versus TAVR, and the only way to get a TAVR is if you're enrolled in the trial. If you're low risk and either don't want to or cannot participate in the trial, minimally invasive valve surgery is always a good option. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful. When looking for a doctor, it's important to find a doctor that is able to perform all three approaches, including SAVR, mini-AVR, and TAVR. For more information, please feel free to call 713-486-5139 or visit our website at www.minivalve.com.